You received a call from an inmate at the Department of Corrections. This call will be recorded and monitored if you wish to block any future calls of this nature. Dial 7 now to accept this call. Press 5 now to decline this call. Hang up. Well, hello there, Miss Strong. I haven't heard from you in a while. How are you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Any complaints you have, you go right ahead and just lay them on me. I'm here for you. Wow. So why why did he quit? Oh. Well, you know, even out here on the outs, if somebody is trying to make some changes, trying to improve things, trying to care for the co-workers and subordinates, they'll walk out on the job too. So it, it, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, this... Uh, correctional officer was upset with the way things were being done over there at the prison and all his complaints and suggestions and you know any any concerns that he had were falling on deaf ears and it's it's frustrating I know I know there's not a lot of uh, prison officials who really care about you guys and so to have somebody just walk out and leave you high and dry well, no, and you know, well, you're not really alone. You know, you do have your supportive relationships out here, and there are a lot of nonprofits that really want to see you succeed. And it, yeah, I, right. So having staff members there, pretty much eight hours out of the day that care about you, is is very rare. And and I, and I know you appreciate it. Oh, I've met a few. You know, I'm not going to say all of the prison officials are bad people. There's just a few select. Wow, really? So you'd say there's about eight people who run that prison. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah that's like something you see in a movie, you know. I, I know when I was in the military, we'd have officers come by and they did all the logistics. But for the most part... We felt the non-commissioned officers were the ones that really ran the show because they were down in there with the people and they understood what was going on, worked their way up through the ranks. It was easy to respect them. And so when you have people on the outside like me who've never been to prison and doesn't really know what it's like in there, advocating for you. I don't think it's as, as powerful as somebody who's been there or who has worked in there and knows firsthand all the experiences. Well, yeah, we, we, we read some things. You know, there's a few things that happen in the prison that we never get word of until after you guys get out. I've heard quite a lot of shocking stories from Washington prisons. You know, the people will get out and tell me about the conditions in there. And of course, you know, when I interview people, they'll they'll tell me about some of the the things they run across in there as well. I know I know it's well, you once again, you are in prison. And so you can't really expect a vacation in there. I know. I hear you completely. And it's really not asking a lot when we want prison officials to follow policy. Well, you, you know, I would say bang the drum. It's very hard to ignore people who are constantly complaining about the same thing. And, you know, if there's a group of you who are saying that... Uh, you're not getting. You have sixty seconds remaining. Your medication, or you're not getting proper uh, medical treatment. It's, somebody's going to have to to listen and come down. Okay, good. Yeah, now, I mean, I know, I know, three's not a lot of people, but that's three that we didn't have yesterday, right? Talk to them, have them reach out. Maybe I can do some interviews with them. We get it, get their issues out there in the open right yeah you have 30 seconds remaining change starts from within so let's band together let's help you out and uh maybe we can get some staff members 
You know, if you know any staff members that want to talk, well, yeah, yeah, they can do it anonymously. Okay, well, I hope to hear from you soon. You take care of yourself and fight the fight. Right. Well, hello, I'm Joel Wilborn, and this is a QS Inmate Call. I'd like to thank you for tuning in, and it does show, you know, that you made the first step to to try and find out what's going on in the prison system and try to make some improvements and try to open discussions. That's always good. Nobody's going to complain about that. Now, as much as I like to complain about wrongdoing, There are people out there that are on our side. They want to see some improvements in the prison system. They want to help incarcerated people get out into the world and live an improved and a better life and not return. And they want to see some deplorable conditions eliminated. And we don't really hear too much about staff complaining because, you know, it could come back to haunt them. It's like the whistleblower thing. And uh, we have respect for that. These folks can do a really good job from within. You know, it's like a a person who goes undercover and uh, sees a lot of stuff that's going on but doesn't want to... uh, put a stop to it until the investigation is over and you know of course things like murder or, or assault or you know threats to uh, assassinate somebody these are dangerous and, and should be stopped right away and when I did undercover work yeah we were, we were told to look out for stuff like that but for the most part you know if, if you're in a prison and you, you see conditions and you make note of it and then you report it to the officials at an appropriate time, you know, that's that's very helpful to everybody. And, and you'll be appreciated for something like that. And I've run across a few staff members that really want to see improvements on both sides. And sometimes, you know, people can work their way up to the point where they are in charge and they can make improvements. And when we see something like that happen, we like it. But on occasion, somebody will work their way up from prison guard, you know, to superintendent, to assistant secretary, secretary, and really not make improvements that you thought. And uh, those are the ones that are scary, you know. And I, I, I did run across a case like that. Fortunately, that person is no longer in position, was actually fired by the governor. So uh, we need to work together from uh, government officials, incarcerated people, supportive relationships, community leaders, legislators. There's a big difference that we can can make. And uh, just because... You don't hear about it doesn't mean it's not going on. And I don't really run across too many cases where false information is given to the public. I have seen instances where they've been hidden from the public. And so, you know, you'll have somebody commit suicide and the public never hears about it. Or somebody will... um, not receive proper medical treatment. You know, they show all the signs of being in trouble, but they're ignored and uh, their condition gets worse. You know, in the case of my fiance, she was supposed to get test, regular test, and they skipped one, and that really came back to haunt her. And uh, 
you know, even though she's reminding them and they're giving her the, the round, the runaround, it's something you don't mess around with. You know, a person's health, I don't care if this person is a, a violent offender who should never, I mean, should never see the light of day. That doesn't mean we throw this person in the cell and just lock the door and walk away. The person is entitled to proper medical care. You know, and I don't expect us to give them plastic surgery or uh, tattoo removal, but I do expect us to keep them alive. You know, their, their sentence is a life sentence, not a death sentence. And, uh, you know, for guards to turn their back and, and let other incarcerated people beat these people up or kill them. Now, you know, we have to draw the line. And uh, we don't, we can't really fix a problem by becoming a new problem. If we throw a person in a prison because they're bad and then we kick them and slap them and, and lock them in solitary confinement and deny them uh, certain privileges and and certain rights and we're no better than than uh, any other person that's locked up you know that's the equalizer right there you take bad people and you put them in in a in a condition where they're overpowered and overrun and um led by bad people so uh, it, it reflects on us because here we are sitting out here paying these taxes and talking to our legislators and, and reading about uh, events that go on into prison and we're allowing it to happen. We're actually sitting out here allowing people to take a paycheck from our tax paying money and treat people like this. So what kind of society is that? Is that what we signed up for? And what if somebody you, you care about, one of your loved ones, is put in prison and treated badly when you could have prevented that? And then we also have to look out for letting people out too early. And we have to look out for people being put in for too long. And we have to look at people not receiving the uh, resources they need when they get out so that they can get their life back in order and not return. So crime can be prevented if we figure out the cause figure out what's motivating people to go out and commit these crimes. I know people who I talk to while in prison and they convince themselves that this is not the right thing to do and they don't want to go back and they don't. They have to want this. They have to drive for this. I was working with a woman who was, would just commit crimes inside of prison, outside of prison. She didn't care. It was almost as if it was a drug for her. Just commit crimes. And so when I talked to her, she said the things I wanted to hear. I want to get into rehabilitation. And when I was committing all these crimes, I was high. And I hung out with the wrong people. I trusted the wrong people. You know, those are things I, I, I want to hear. And so that we know that we have a starting point where we can uh, start working on getting the resources that she needs so that she won't commit them. But it was just a lie. All she really wanted to do was just commit crimes and use people and manipulate people. And yeah, that happens. You know, there's people in there who will call out and continue their crimes just by making it look like they're the victim. And so we have to really be careful on that. So there's, you know, in my interviews on my YouTube channel, there's people that are saying that they committed a crime and they deserve to be there. 
but they're surrounded by people who should never be put out, who should stay in there for the rest of their life. And they're saying this because they know these people, they live with these people, they talk with them, they associate with them, and they watch their actions. And they know that if this person were to get out, more crimes would be committed. You know, I was on the jury for uh, Kevin Coe, and they wanted to release him after his time was served. And we discovered, you know, just by talking about it and looking at the evidence and listening to witnesses, that there was a very good chance if he did get out, he would continue to commit crimes. And so we voted to keep him in there and get him some medical treatment. I'm weary about keeping people in longer than their sentence, but I'm very much concerned about public safety. And with all that we saw, this person shouldn't get out. And there are a lot of folks that's like that. And that's what the prison should be for. If these people are not willing to stop committing these crimes, then we have no choice but to keep them in there. But if they want to try to do that and we can give them the resources, you know, I'm not saying care for them 24 hours a day. I'm just saying that the resources should be there. We should at least listen to them. I want to get out. I never want to go back. Then, okay, here's your resources. You use them. You take advantage of them. You get our money's worth out of them. And you don't go back to prison. And there's quite a few people that would actually go out and do that. If a person goes to prison because of an addiction... And the addiction is expensive, so the person winds up committing multiple crimes. You know, we need to work on getting rid of that addiction. And there's been people murdered. There's been people assaulted. There's people have been uh, lost their uh, means of... of, uh, Support, you know, their jobs and their careers, all because of an addiction. And then there's those that feed off these addictions. You know, if they they get locked up and they're selling drugs in the prison, I don't really think they're going to do too well on the outside. So let's try to find out what's causing people to go to prison. And let's try to find out better ways to take care of them. And most importantly, let's support those who are putting their uh, career on the line by trying to make changes. You know, we don't need any more good officers walking out. And I hope when this person walks out into the community, there's a big welcome. You know, we're sad you, you had to leave. But we're happy that you cared and that you took your stand. And uh, that's the kind of support that could go a long way, that could do a lot, move a lot of mountains, we'll say. Well, thank you again for tuning in and thank you for your support. I hope you get out, talk to your friends, family and loved ones and uh, listen, listen to the folks that are reaching out to you. And sometimes that's all it will take is just somebody to help calm them down by listening. And you can do that becoming a pen pal. And you can also do that by uh, doing some research of your own. You know, looking into some newspaper articles of what's going on in the prisons in your area. Or you can talk to folks that uh, work in the prison system or have worked in the prison system or have been incarcerated. So go out, have yourself a wonderful day, and make beautiful memories for tomorrow.